Christianity is one of the most controversial religion that you can find. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if you want to be a gay pastor, you're free to be a gay pastor. No matter what you want, though, in Christianity, you can just do it. Ever throughout history, one of the things we identify is that man loves to have full control. That's man, true. man don't love order. Man love chaos. You find that a lot of the other religions, the, 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 the repercussions is quite severe and swift. Anything that appears easy will be easily taken for granted. If you feel like a, a man and you're a biological female, that's who you are. Everything is about how you feel. I saw a woman the other day got married to her dog. That's how she feels. I saw a woman the other day who got married to a boat. I'm kind of scared of the fact that people are taking God's grace and mercy for granted. Mm -hmm. And as a man of God who been in ministry for many years, and you have a lot of influence, I guess, as well. A lot of persons would like to hear from you now. What should they do? Because we don't want we young generation coming up, coming up, following in the same footstep, taking God's grace and mercy for granted. There are some realities that we have to accept, which as a man of God, I, I, have, I have accepted this. I've accepted the promise that there will be more people in hell than there will be in heaven. I cannot tell the amount, but this is a biblical fact. What, 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 what we're saying is that the books were open first. It says, and another book. Those books contain the names of all those who were going into the lake of fire, condemned already. No, it says another book. It means that's one. So the book with the names of those who are saved is one. My job is as Paul said. Paul said, preach a word, be instant, in season and out of season. I am not policing anybody. When I teach God's word, you up to you if you want to accept it. I, 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 I have nothing to do with it afterwards. David respected Saul, not because the Lord's anointing is on his life, but it's a past tense. It's not upon Saul's life anymore. It was resting on David now. Mm -hmm. But for the fact that the anointing was upon his life, he respected Saul in spite of everything we do. That's right. And oftentimes, I put myself through the test. And I said, so, evangelist, pass someone good smile to you, don't? Yes. If you're borrowing bus in Lenny, not true? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Japan, woman at time, don't? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? What if you beg him one five bills in a year, not true? Yeah. But what if pastor look by you and say, evangelist, you're wrong if you say that to that sister then. Will you see pastor the same way? <laughs> so that point that uh, you make, uh, and I believe this is the issue we're having today. People will look on you and respect you when you do something good and you can give them something. Mm -hmm. And that's full of the church today. You can't believe that happened in a church today, no pastor. True. In think, a church. I be a big people come to church. Mm. Nobody no want a correction. Wow. That's true. Is that's true. true. That's true. That's true. As soon that's as you true. correct that's them, true. them true. go open to them feelings. That's true. Most of these prophets and they they they, they have this kind of thing with them what they do. But they don't have self some of them with them. And then kick their foot and then <laughs> and see people start jump over there so then take their rug and then mm. then you see a brother them then go so and part the crowd over there so over there so drop they then go so and over the side over there so drop down too. So hold on, what about the one with the dance? You remember the one? <laughs> the, the apostolic church have misunderstood the scriptures for whole lot of years. And even when people feel, um, if the person don't turn over the benches, then say the person don't feel with power. Karen, should I be guilty? Mm. Because when me and Tarim tell me about what happened to him, about um, Jesus Pancras? No, him see Pussa going to rise, he devil make him see Pussa going to rise. Their view is that when you have the anointing on you, you have to shake and you have to, you know, run up and down all over the place. Bible said that when the Holy Ghost came, it was what? Noise abroad. Everybody was praising God. So it tell you, there's a time for the madness. There's a time for the run up and down. There's a time for the speaking. There's a time for all of that. But in the midst of all that, Peter was so sober. Peter was so conscious. Peter, the man who had the key, you know, 
that when them say you're not see a drunk at them peter said what did i say and peter was able to preach the gospel because he was in his right mind even though the whole was just come and the panic wow I, I sit down and i meditate on these things mm -hmm. you have a ministry with a lot of folks you have great influence they they looked up to you they respect you they believe you when you speak and all those things so i'm saying like those prosperity preachers why is it that you're still driving an old vaxi looking at that mix over there i remember the evening when you go install it and my big yard job go remember yep. mm -hmm. and you're going to bus and start how much time you shut off and i care about before you move <laughs> couple times well, about three to four times and you know what struck me that time i said why is it that how you 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 spend money on such a big item and your boss won't fix <laughs> it's not that i'm better than any of those persons um a lot of gifts comes with a lot of conditions oh, yeah. so i really don't look to people because people tend to be your boss when they give i learned that it's better to give than to receive i believe that if i take care of god's business god will take care of mine amen amen like you have a rules that they shouldn't wear falls here and they, their head must be covered they shouldn't wear jewelry and all those things and if they wear that they cannot come in the pulpit to sing do anything nor nothing like that but yet i'm not saying it happened it didn't happen here in restoration but when someone flew down from foreign overseas international persons they can come in the falls here and they can go and minister they can do all these things why is it so isn't that partiality now we have two different things we have what are known as biblical doctrines what we get from the bible that the bible says this the bible says that and then we have what them call church rules now the church rules might not be necessarily found in the bible but it is within the spirit of the scripture to govern the particular assembly now somebody say me go obey the bible me now obey a church rule all right paul while he was addressing the Corinthian church, he said, listen, what I have now saying to you, the Lord told me to tell you. Then he said, what I'm about to say, no, the Lord did not tell me to tell you. However, as a man of God, I have enough wisdom to implement and institute something that can help you. You go see that up at Sister Abbey Church. And then now come and say, so how come we can't do it here so? Me want it. No, there's a simple solution. Go on and have a church. Don't try to stay and don't try to fight against what is already established. It is the custom of the assembly that you're a part of. Now, while the thing might not be sin in and of itself, hear how it becomes sin. When it is established as a rule and you choose to rebel. So now, your sin it's not necessarily um, whether makeup or hot or your sin is disobedience. If that person is coming and wearing hat is not their tradition, I'm going to say to that individual, our custom here, wow. our tradition here is to wear this. So we're asking you to respect the custom of the house. Wow. And if the individual cannot do it, sit down down the south like everybody else but you must respect the host that you're coming to be a part of Amen. Amen. so it is an insult a great disrespect and hurt to members of the church who are struggling with certain things and when they, they say big so and so come from foreign yeah. and pastor sit down i say yes man preach preach pastor you're a hypocrite you need to respect your congregation Wow, that is powerful. Say you need to respect your congregation. Right. I just uh, I just hear the pastor from the church just come down to me same time and say, mm, this one is stubborn. <laughs> and you know what the pastor did? <laughs> the pastor take the olive oil and throw it on me throat. And same ah. time he start cough, it's like me almost choke. Yes, and to be, honest, yes, <laughs> to be honest, the spirit come To be honest, I develop a hatred for that pastor Whoa. and it damaged me. And this is the next thing. I don't want to come to church and me drop everything for please, Pastor Mary. Mm -hmm. And in a myself, 
You understand me then? The old me is still there. I'm going to be frank, but when I want to know more about God, mm -hmm. I want to grow food. So let me know when I leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter how you say we feel left. <laughs> me read me basically. I know not even me. Mm. I cannot leave. I'll mm. be frank with you. Because sometimes I say me I'm left, but me can't leave. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I cannot leave. So somebody like me you now we are struggle. Oh me record at the part they know because me I try. Mm. Being that you have the past, I know what I say. If you don't want to do me, say go. Um has that been your experience here? Is it that you have a pastor where I pressure you and I tell you, say, don't come back, leave. Or is it that you have somebody who, if you don't understand something, you ask him and he talk to you. Tell me your experience. Okay, so for my experience, yeah. I don't have a pastor who would bash me and say, okay, then you can't stay. There are persons who are so rude, they have no respect, and they just throw it in your face. So that's what we're talking about. People who don't care, then just like, do what I do, I expect say, you're just to go along with it. But if you're mannerable about it and have some respect, that's totally different. Thank you. I appreciate the last question that was asked, you answering it. Let's go. Um, I was at a church I went before, that question was asked and the the bishop kind of shut it down okay and without no explanation up until today i was Whoa. so confused so Whoa. i appreciate you answering that question because he shut it down uh. and he 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 was like well at this church we don't do that so just don't do it so oh i had to say that um jesus didn't fulfill his potential and I'm like, hmm, but this not really sound right because I know that potential is having the capacity to develop something in the future. He says Jesus never fulfilled his full potential. I say this to you. Purpose trumps potential. Purpose more than potential. Potential talks about the room and the capacity to grow and to go further. Jesus' purpose was to die on the cross at age 33 for the what? For the church to start. It wasn't his purpose, though it was his potential. We're going to have wife and go have children, potential. But purpose was for him to die on the cross. So you cannot bring the argument of potential with Jesus because it's a nonsensical argument. Talk about purpose and potential with us. Because we have the capacity to grow beyond where we are. Jesus had a specific purpose.